For most, there is one series that comes to mind when the idea of hack and slash games comes up, and that Dynasty Warriors. This is the perfect example why hack and slash games, at the most basic level, are well repetitive. In them you can turn off your intelligence and play alone or with friends without worrying about complex puzzles. Thinking about this genre, today I decided to bring the best hack and slash games for PC. Another great title from the makers of the Dark Souls series and Bloodborne, Sekiro is also a game that tests your patience if you are not determined. While you can't create your own character or participate in multiplayer content, there are still a lot of aspects to this game that related to its Souls partners. Unlike those games, however, you have the ability to revive after being killed using resurrection power and you have tools that help you with exploration at your disposal. This game follows the Sengoku period in Japan and there are a lot of elements that pay homage to the country in admirable and honorable ways. The original Prince of Persia was a far cry from the visually stunning 3D adventure Ubisoft Montreal wound up giving gamers in 2003. Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time was a mingling of platforming and hack and slash, a pairing that works really well. The Prince is an acrobatic character, allowing players to vault off of walls to add some style to the combat. There's much to like about Sands of Time, from plenty of adventurous exploration to fighting mechanics that have stood the test of time. There's a bit of strategy involved and button mashing attacks will surely get you killed, but the Prince puts his sword to good use quite often. The game's biggest selling point has to be the time manipulation, which lets you rewind time to solve puzzles and rectify missteps in fights. Diablo is another massive name in the gaming industry, with many claiming that Diablo 2 is one of the best games in history. Diablo 3 is the third entry in the series, taking place 20 years after the second game. In it, you can choose between seven different classes, with tons of unique builds and playstyles. The real hacking and slashing begins when you complete rifts. These are dungeon-like areas that involve killing as many enemies as possible in order to spawn a powerful guardian. Prototype 2 follows a story different from the first game as you take on the role of games James Heller who can shapeshift and assume other people's identities and memories by consuming them. Being able to take on people's likeness can provide you with many different ways to go about the story as some people, namely soldiers, can be consumed and used as stealth mechanics. Of course, there are certain elements akin to the first game such as the return of Alex Mercer. You can take advantage of move sets that allow you to pick up objects in your surroundings and use them against enemies alongside other abilities that Heller possesses. You could also turn people into your own personal bombs or even use nearby artillery to your advantage. The Diablo series could be categorized into a lot of genres but hack and slash seems most fitting. They aren't fully 3D as gameplay is experienced from a top-down perspective unlike most of these other titles. Still, the hack and slash vibe is alive in them, especially with the latest installment via Diablo 4. The storytelling is better, the classes are more refined, and the seasonal updates are interesting so far. It's the game to start with in the series and will probably remain the definitive hack and slash looter RPG for years to come. Shadow of Mordor was a sleeper hit that took the world by storm during its release and the sequel was no different. Taking place in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings universe, players control Talion who is infused with the spirit of an elf lord due to circumstances from the previous game. The game utilizes a nemesis system which means that as you are defeated by enemies, those enemies will become stronger. Alternatively, as you defeat enemies, you will come across new and different enemies that come to take their place. There is a multiplayer mode that allows players to invade other players' fortresses and attempt to conquer them so if you're having a blast with the detailed single player, you might want to hop online with your friends. The Devil May Cry franchise stretches back to 2001, with the release of the first game. Since then, we've seen several games in the franchise release, including Devil May Cry 5 in 2019. These games are a classic for any fan of hack and slash, as well as video games in general. In Devil May Cry, you take on the role of Dante, a demon hunter in flight slews of enemies in style. If you want the full experience, we recommend starting with the first game released in the franchise, but it's also totally possible to start with DM3, as this is chronologically the first game. The Dynasty Warriors games are in a league of their own with gameplay that other games can only hope to accomplish. 
In this installment, the storyline remains the same as its previous counterparts, with characters and battles being reminiscent of actual events and persons. Gameplay plays out as large-scale battles in which your goal is to eradicate the enemy factions using your character's abilities and their armies. There are seamless cutscenes interwoven in each scene and intense attacks and movesets to witness. You can also explore the map in a free reign mode that detaches itself from the regular combat normally present in these kinds of games and allows you to even play as opposing factions instead of being married to the ones provided in the story. The top-down perspective is a popular one for the hack end slash genre, and games like Path of Exile serve to prove why. Grinding Gear Games did an incredible job in creating a game that doesn't simply mimic others of its kind. Before even getting to the gameplay, it's worth noting that Path of Exile is one of the more beautiful top-down hack and slash games out there. The lighting alone is impressive, which lends to beautiful character models and detailed shadows. The deeper you get into Path of Exile, the more you may question how it could remain a free-to-play experience. There's no lack of content, bugs are so few and far between, and the world is detailed and fun to explore. Players take on the role of one of six classes, a duelist, marauder, ranger, shadow, templar, or witch, and master a selection of weapons and skills to survive the expansive, online world. Though it is an online adventure, you're not forced into grouping with other players and are free to roam the dangerous world as a lone wolf. Persona 5 Strikers is the best game Omega Force, responsible for Dynasty Warriors and its spin-offs, has ever made. That's because it feels like a true sequel to the original material thanks to the Persona team at Atlas helping out. The game takes place over the summer and the Phantom Thieves find themselves in another Mind Palace situation. The gameplay is now action-based but Persona summoning and magic still come into the strategy of battle. The one downside is that it does not offer co-op, unlike most Omega Force games. For Honor takes players through several different ages of war in form of knights, samurais, and vikings. Each of these factions has different classes that each utilize different gameplay styles to achieve the same goal of defeating your enemies in melee battles through a third-person perspective. The battles are played in a rock-paper-scissors sense with players needing to pay close attention to the reactions of the enemy players. This is the main means of combat in the game and can result in some incredibly gruesome battles and intense victories. The game has been regarded for its difficult and unique combat system and for good reason. The multiplayer even invokes a friendly fire feature which means that players can damage their own teammates by accident. Next up, we have Darksiders. Rather than being a powerful warrior or unknown figure turned hero, you get to play as one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. With four main games, each one features a different horseman, providing a varied experience. In terms of story, Darksiders manages to flawlessly combine a compelling plot with hack and slash elements. Additionally, you can find many puzzles spread throughout the world, giving you a break from the hacking and slashing. The Tales of series is beloved among fans of JRPG games. This particular game was meant to be aimed at new and existing fans through intense gameplay alterations and character development. As always, there is a great story involved that will take you across the world of both Rena and Dama, worlds that are divided by conflict. It won Best RPG at the Game Awards 2021 and it deserves it for all of the efforts clearly put into its development. There is no multiplayer, however, so if you are interested in that then you might want to look elsewhere but as mentioned before, the single player leaves so much to be explored that you will be too. Earlier, we mentioned that for the most part, hack and slash games are third person. Warhammer Vermintide 2 is an exception to this. Set in the universe of Warhammer, this game is sessions where you or three others play through a map to achieve a goal, and then run to a teleporting area to return home. Although this game is first person, you will need to use both your melee and ranged weapons to take on massive groups of enemies. At times, enemies seem to come from every direction, you will only have the weapons on hand and your allies to survive. Instead of playing as a class, you play as a character. These characters will have unique interactions together, making it truly feel like a band of allies. Senua's Sacrifice is an intense story following the titular Senua as she traverses a dark fantasy world inspired by Norse mythology and Celtic culture. Her goal is to rescue the soul of her dead lover from the goddess Hela which plays itself out to be an emotional story. 
much of the theme of the game revolves around the psychological impacts of psychosis through careful consideration of the neurological disorder as Senua believes it to be a curse that has been bestowed on her. She hears voices in her head and experiences memories that present themselves in the form of enemies and puzzles that she must solve in order for her to reach her goal through what she believes in her own mind and body. Dead Cells is a bit different from Devil May Cry, both in mechanics and visuals. In Dead Cells, you will have a roguelite experience. If you are unfamiliar with this genre, it essentially means that when you die, you have to start over from the same spot and begin a new run. Overall, your goal is to escape from the castle that you are trapped in, slaying any and every enemy that stands in your way. Dead Cells flawlessly blends together the hack and slash, roguelite, and metroidvania genres. Nio 2 takes place in Japan during the late 1500s and follows Hyde from the previous game. Hyde's journey through the Sengoku era begins when they befriend Tokichiro, an ambitious merchant seeking out Amrita, and Mumio, a demon hunter of the Sohaya group, eventually playing a critical role in the rise and fall of the warlord Toyotomi Hideyoshi. The game also follows a very similar style to the Souls series in that you are faced with challenging gameplay and overwhelming enemies. It was also nominated for Best Action Game at the Game Awards 2020, which also proves its worthiness and placement on this list. Using the power of music, Hi-Fi Rush places you in the role of Chai, who is attempting to take down a megacorporation. Rather than just randomly swinging weapons and killing, Hi-Fi Rush is essentially an action rhythm game. Hi-Fi Rush requires you to think about the moves you make, following the beat or making your own. Overall, Hi-Fi Rush is a unique take on the classic hack and slash game, breathing some life into the genre. This is probably the first time you've heard about Naraka, Blade Point, and we aren't surprised. It is a battle royale game in which players choose from a roster of characters to spawn on an island and fight one another. The map will slowly get smaller and smaller with a random center, pressuring players to get more creative and desperate to be the last team standing. It is akin to other titles such as Fortnite, but the difference is in the combat. There are no firearms and instead, players will be fighting one another with blades in hand. Each map holds 60 players so you'll want to learn the best gameplay for your playstyle to defeat your enemies. Dynasty Warriors is a sprawling franchise with 9 main games and tons of spin-offs, including Fire Emblem Warriors and Hyrule Warriors. The overall premise of the games remains the same, mow down large hordes of enemies using your weapons and abilities. If you could pick any one game to be the definition of hack and slash, it would definitely be Dynasty Warriors. There's nothing more satisfying than attacking and defeating dozens of enemies in one large swipe. If you are looking for the newest Dynasty Warriors game, check out the ninth game in the franchise. Revengeance is a little bit different than what you would expect from your average Metal Gear Solid game in the sense that the focus is primarily on swordplay. Players take on the role of Raiden who is a katana-wielding cyborg in a post-guns of the Patriots world. Because of the unique style of gameplay, Raiden can use his sword to commit a wide range of attacks and parrying combos. It is very fast-paced and focuses a lot on the different cutting systems that can be used to bypass obstacles as well as search for resources throughout. Considering this, there are also different ranks that you can earn during each level as you would with typical hack and slash games like Devil May Cry or Bayonetta. Of course, with Nier, Automata and Devil May Cry on the list, we couldn't just leave out Bayonetta. As noted earlier, this game has similar combat to Nier, providing a smooth fighting experience. The first Bayonetta game is available on PC, but you can find the other two games on the Nintendo Switch. In this franchise, you play as Bayonetta as you hack and slash your way through groups of angels. Along the way, you can use your witchy abilities, such as Witch Time, which triggers after dodging at the last second. In Witch Time, the world slows around Bayonetta, but can continue to hack at normal speed. Unlike most other games in the Monster Hunter series, World takes on the fan-favorite formula and really turns it on its head. In Monster Hunter, World, you create your character and choose a class according to your preferred weapon type to defeat an array of enemies. Defeating these enemies allows you to create new armor and weapon sets that can be used to defeat even larger monsters. The game takes place over several open world maps that allow you to explore and hunt monsters or cut down resources for whatever it is that you need. You can either play by yourself or with friends to take down these monsters and share the rewards. 
Next up, we have Nier Automata. This game has its roots in the Drakengard franchise, with Nier being a 2010 spin-off. In 2017, this spin-off earned a sequel, which was Nier Automata. The game combines classic RPG elements with hack and slash mechanics, allowing you to carefully defeat waves of enemies. Nier Automata was brought to us by Platinum Games, who also developed the Bayonetta franchise. As such, the combat in both games is similar. Interestingly, Bayonetta was originally inspired by Devil May Cry, which is also on our list. Both games were created by the same person, Hideki Kamaya. Platforms, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and Series S, Nintendo Switch, Microsoft Windows. In a realm that has been taken down by its own hand, the being known as Corvus is their only hope if they can get their memories back. But to do that, they must fight hordes of vile monsters. Thymesia features strong hack and slash gameplay that'll really push you to the edge at times, but in a good way. You'll need to take special plague weapons from enemies and then use it against them in order to do the most damage. You can also transform into a raven and unleash special attacks with your feathers. As you battle, you can upgrade what Corvus can do and create a playstyle that is perfect for you. Whatever it takes to save the realm. Castlevania, Lords of Shadow is one of the many games in the Castlevania franchise, launching well over 10 years ago. Still, Castlevania, Lords of Shadow holds up as a fantastic entry, serving as a reboot of the franchise. If this game interests you, there are also DLCs that you can play through. There is a second game titled Castlevania, Lords of Shadow 2, and while it's still a great game, many consider the first the best of the two. Undecember might be worth checking out because this is a free-to-play title. Within the game premise, we're following a tale of 12 gods that emerged from nothing and crafted the world and species within it. For years, humans worshipped these gods, and peace flourished throughout the land. However, a thirteenth god suddenly emerged called Serpents. Creating chaos, the only means to stop this evil was if all the gods fell back into the void. Years later, humanity attempted to bring the twelve gods back, but they ultimately failed as it woke the evil Serpents back. Now chaos thrives in the world again, and that's where your journey begins. Being that this is a free-to-play game, it's worth at least giving it a chance, but you might expect to run into some P2W views with the game if you're not looking to grind through the campaign. Like a Dragon, Ishin aims to continue the fun and action-packed gameplay that previous entries in the renamed franchise delivered. But it's doing it in a way that changes the game in certain aspects. Instead of being in the modern day, you'll be in 1860s Japan. Specifically, you'll be in Kyoto on a mission to discover the truth behind your father's death and get cleansed of the false crime you were charged with. When you fight, you'll have many options for taking down foes. You can wield your sword or fire a revolver to take out enemies. Build your samurai how you want to change the future. Last Epic is an ARPG, drawing from games such as Diablo and Path of Exile. In this game, you can pick from five base classes, with each one having three specializations. Within each class, you will also find impressive trees for each skill, which improve and tweak it. As an ARPG, you can expect to use your weapons and abilities to take on groups of enemies, as well as strong bosses that stand in your way. Although you can see elements of other ARPGs, the combat and mechanics of the game are unique enough to make Last Epic worth it. Who here hasn't wanted to be a vampire lord at one point or another? The powers are great! But the hours suck, or so we're told. If you still wish to live out those vampire dreams, get V Rising. The game has you as a vampire lord who awakens after a long slumber to find that his castle is gone, his powers are weakened, and the world is not how he remembered it. Now, you must rise and retake what is yours. Rebuild your castle, Drain locals to increase your powers or gain servants, and fight off those who wish to put you back into the ground. This title is a classic Muzu crossover of Samurai Warriors and Dynasty Warriors. Take control over three main characters each with a different class and skills. Featuring 170 playable characters, Warriors Orochi is a highly replayable game. The story mixes Greek aspects and offers plus 70 quests. You can explore labyrinthic scenarios and face swarms of enemies that grow harder as you progress. 
play the story mode or venture yourself into the online competitive challenges. You might think of like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name as nothing more than a brawler, given the fact that these characters use their fists a lot. However, like any good Yakuza would, they have access to weapons that they can unleash on foes. So pick up what's near you and have a look at it. Let them know that they shouldn't have messed with this Shadow Dragon when he had already made the ultimate sacrifice. There will be plenty of enemies to face, so unleash upon them so you can get some catharsis while you play. Or, you don't have to use the weapons. Say what you will about the hypersexualized protagonist of this vampire hack and slash, Blood Rain was a must-play for GameCube, PS2, and Xbox players. It may be a bit of a technical mess today, but Terminal Reality's bloody action-adventure spawned a terrible film, several sequels, a comic series, and many disgusting fantasies. That says something about the staying power of Blood Rain. As the titular vampire, players are tossed back to the 1930s, during the Nazi rise to power. With a pair of signature blades and her bloodlust, Blood Rain tears through the Germans, quite literally. Blood Rain is bloody, ridiculous, over the top, and everything you could want out of a mindless hack and slash title, doubling up as one of the best vampire games in the process. There's something thrilling about hack and slash action that really gets gamers fired up. If you're looking for your next fix in that department, can have a nice death. In this roguelike hack and slash adventure, you'll play as death who is on a mission to wrangle and his unruly underlings who are making Death Incorporated a mess and scrolling with his job flow. The combat gives you plenty of options, as there are 70 weapons and magic spells for you to utilize. Mixing these up will deliver devastating combos to help put everyone down under. Plus, since you're Death, you can't die. So you'll just reload and get back at it. In a distant future, humanity fell into the brutal hands of mutants known as Others. These creatures came from the sky seeking to feed their hunger for human brains. As they spread terror among survivors, you get ready to kill them all. Two psionic characters, Yudo and Kasani join forces to fight and exterminate the problem. Use their psychokinetic abilities to make your environment a lethal weapon. Scarlet Nexus is set in a futuristic Japan where you can experience the dual story of Yudo and Kasani. Hades is one of my favorite games on this list. It plays like a roguelike dungeon crawler that follows the lore of Greek mythology. You play as Zagreus, the son of both Hades and Persephone, as he tries to escape the layers of the underworld in order to reach Mount Olympus to be with his cousins. Of course, Hades won't let him go that easily, and so each layer of the underworld is littered with different enemies and bosses. As you go through each dungeon, you'll come across different abilities bestowed upon you by the gods as they try to help you reach the surface. There's plenty of lore that went into the development of the game and there are even some customization elements in the sense of decorating the underworld for every time you die, you are automatically returned from where you began to start over. So, did you like the games I recommended? So leave your like, subscribe to the channel to follow me and activate the bell because I post a lot of videos on this channel and you can't miss it. I would like to remind you that in the description we have a list of different products that can make your gaming experience much better. If you want to buy, the link will be in the description. Anyway, thank you very much for following me this far and until next time, bye!